Hey guys, so we got a little bit of maintenance to work at in the freestyle barn. Right at the end of the second group, these headlocks are rusting out. My dad went and got a new section the other day. I think we're just gonna cut this in half and use two of them, because these are still in pretty good shape. Just these last two are ruined. These headlocks are 17 years old. They're holding up pretty good, most of them, but the ones on the end are starting to rust quicker because I guess they get more rain and elements from the end of the barn. We actually had to replace this section recently on this side. We just, we hadn't gotten this one done. So, robot's coming through. Oh, it's convenient. So once my dad gets here, we're just taking lunch. We'll just cut this old one off. These headlocks are pretty much the same as the ones we have in our heifer barn, except these are a little bit wider for milking cows. And these cows never pull these pins out. Never touch them. I'm gonna get this door closed, it's a little windy. Just trying to figure out the best place to cut this headlock. I guess we're gonna try and cut it right here. And then right there. We took it off. We didn't have quite enough space to slip it past that pipe on the bottom. I'm gonna cut three quarters of an inch off of this. It's supposed to have a square insert there and they gave us a round one. I'm not sure if that was a mistake. Just had to extend that top a little bit. This bar connects the hoy down through the lever. Switch it over to lock. Yeah, it works. They seem to lose a little bit of their strength when you cut them like this with these connectors. It's just through the middle of the head lock. So I might drill something down through it and put something down in the concrete there to just give it some more strength. The other side could use one too. Thought maybe we needed the square insert there, but yeah, I don't think we gotta replace that. It feels solid to me. I think it's gonna go anywhere, yeah. It is the next morning. 
I was feeding. My dad's finishing up the heifer batch right now. I'm gonna actually bed the heifer barn up while he's doing that. Got the skiddy warming up. It's a beautiful morning. If any of you care about the weather, I'll give you the update. One thing I forgot to mention with this barn, they put this chicken wire bird netting on the bottom of the trusses. The whole thing's sealed off. Birds can't get up in the rafters there and make nests. That's something I wish we would have done in our other barns when we built those. I'm gonna close this barn up, go get some breakfast, and then we'll come back out. And we need to put the water heaters in these watering troughs because it's starting to get a little bit cold out. We're gonna need to make sure they don't freeze up. One other thing I didn't mention in the tour of this barn was the, the feed alley. We have a nice wide alley. We had to back in every time. We decided not to make it a big enough gap that we could loop, loop around with the mixer. Uh, we just back in once a day to feed. It's really not bad. And with this scrape alley, we had to kind of set this up so we could back the mixer far enough to run feed right there. So this gate springs back in a place you can just drive into it with the mixer. And then you can come back far enough and it just closes itself. Originally we were thinking of making a lane around the back side so we could loop around and up here and then we decided to put this alleyway and it just didn't make sense really to have a lane come around. It's really easy to back in though with how wide this concrete is. Then the feed, we run it out in the morning and we just come through and push it in with the broom in the afternoon around four or five o'clock, one time a day. And it works out good because then it kind of splits the feeding it's like running out feet a second time. They can reach probably two thirds of it before we have to push it in. So I'll be back out in a little bit. My dad's on his way. We're gonna work at fixing the little problem we have in the milking parlor first thing this morning. Wanted to show you guys our new hoodies we're selling. Just got these in, they're really comfortable. I think they look pretty sweet. And also these beanie caps. So if you guys are interested, links in the description. Appreciate it. My dad just showed up. We got the tools on the back of the Kubota. Well, I'll show you what we're going to fix in the parlor. Down at the end where the cows walk in to the parlor, these pipes and this one was for a long time. We just had it taped, staying in place. But after a while, it breaks loose and falls off. We finally got the right clamps to get this fixed up. We weren't able to get the exact same thing that they had before, but should be able to get it figured out. We like to duct tape stuff, not always uh, too permanent, but we think it is. This pipe has been duct taped on for probably over a year, right there? Yeah, and it worked for a year. The old setup had these flat pieces welded onto the three inch pipe there, but this is what we got. So it's just gonna stick inside of this pipe. Gonna have to get rid of this.
We got to put on that end's tight. Now we went to put this end on and thought about this is kind of sticking out where the cows walk through. The other ones they didn't stick out at all. Yeah, we don't want them catching their legs on that. So probably need to get a welder and just weld this side on. And then we can just cut this off. We don't really have the right plug for our welder anywhere here to easily weld. All right, guys. So we decided we're just gonna go ahead and weld this right now. We're just gonna get our generator in there quick and weld it up. It's a little bit inconvenient, but we're just gonna quick do it. We'll get it done. This is an example of why sometimes it's easier to just duct tape something. Dad's going to get the neighbor's little tractor. We're going to hook it up to the generator. I couldn't fit our 7220 in here with the big axles and the cab. Just not quite enough room going through here. And we tried going outside the window out there. We still don't have a long enough cord from the welder. Just makes a job like this, which is very simple, complicated, because we don't have the right tools. We just need a 220 extension cord so we can plug this in farther away. Just can't quite reach from there. We got it done. So what we ended up doing, just cutting those brackets off, got them welded. That way it won't catch any cows or people walking through. Job took way longer than it should have, but it's done, so it's good. I'm out at the heifer barn now. I'm gonna go ahead and put these water heaters in the troughs. This part goes in the bowl, and there's another line that goes down the Hose to keep that from freezing up. There's a few zip ties there. We can attach it to the water line. Should be pretty easy. Just gotta plug them in. I could have done this before we moved the cattle in, but they were saying it's good to pull them out every year in the summer and uh, dry them out and everything. So I figured we'll have to do this every fall. I might as well just put them in once we need them. So I guess I need a screwdriver. I forgot to open up them troughs to go grab that quick. Excuse me. Got power to each of these waterers. Plug them in on the, the back side of that right there. I got both lines plugged in there. I'm just gonna take a few zip ties and we'll make sure this is attached to the water line coming up through. Down underground it won't freeze, but it's gonna start getting cold once it's up in here. And hopefully it's not too bad. The barn's open to the south, so we'll get sunlight and heat coming in this side. And the wind will be blocked from the back. And having 16 calves drinking from this will help keep water moving through. Won't give it as much time to freeze up, hopefully. In our other heifer barn, we had heaters in the waters, but not really on the lines coming up, so it was 
pretty common for them to freeze if it got real cold. I think we're gonna be set up a little better in this barn. I got that heating wire zipped out onto that water line the way down through. Down in there. So this only turns on when it gets cold enough, so it won't run all the time. So I'll just uh, do the other three. Shouldn't take me too long. You got these metal pipes around the back to keep them from pulling water out this way as much. Helps keep the bedding drier. That's another nice thing about the slats. They stay drier so then they're not dragging as much liquid onto your bed pack. Got this one on, that's the third one. We'll go down and do that last one. I already know it's gonna be the hardest one because the heifers just get way more uh, friendly once you get towards the end. I don't know why, older heifers are just crazy. Younger ones usually stay back. These are kind of in between. Cut it out. I got the last one done. There's two screws to hold this door on there. And I was setting them inside this box while I was working on the waters to, so I wouldn't lose them. These heifers had to grab the box in this last pen and just flung it. He pulled it out there and we're messing with it. Now I don't know where the screws are. Yeah, I should have put them in my pocket. I stole a screw off one of the other waterers. So at least uh, it has one on it. Like Finding a needle in the haystack. This heifer's in heat today. We bred her earlier. I don't have the breaker on for all the water heaters. I have to go flip that on. Now those shouldn't be running unless it gets cold enough. They have a thermostat at them. As soon as you step out here, you feel cold wind. Barn's definitely doing its job sheltering. Okay, thanks a lot for watching, guys.